The Biological Safety Cabinet is an enclosed, ventilated workspace for safely working with materials contaminated with, or potentially contaminated with, pathogens in the laboratory. The primary purpose of a BSC is to serve as the primary means to protect the laboratory worker and the surrounding environment from pathogens. All exhaust air is HEPA filtered as it exits the biosafety cabinet, removing harmful bacteria and viruses. As with work on open bench tops, work performed within a BSC must be performed carefully and safely. Proper placement of the biosafety cabinet is critical to the safety of the operator and its environment. The biosafety cabinet should have at least 30 centimeters or a foot of space between its sides and the wall or any large obstruction. The cabinet should have at least 2 meters or 7 feet of space between its front aperture and the wall or any large obstruction, 1.5 meters or 5 feet of space when it's against laboratory furniture such as a bench, and 3 meters or 10 feet of space when it's against laboratory equipment such as another biosafety cabinet. It should be placed at least one and a half meters or six feet away from opening doors or any other apertures that can interfere with the cabinet's airflow. A biosafety cabinet should be placed at least one meter or three feet away from any foot traffic. A projecting bench can minimize traffic and will not affect the cabinet's performance provided the bench is situated at least one meter or three feet from the side of the cabinet. Do not use the cabinet if any of the alarms is triggered. Do not stack boxes or objects on top of the biosafety cabinet as this can damage the exhaust filter and disrupt the airflow. Do not use the cabinet for agents of extreme hazard, such as toxic, flammable, or explosive materials. Biosafety cabinets need to be recertified annually to ensure the cabinet is working within the safety limit. Most biosafety cabinets are designed to be used by one operator only, unless specified otherwise. Any additional operator might break the air curtain and contaminate the materials. Only a trained operator should operate the biosafety cabinet. In today's microbiological and biomedical research laboratories, procedures are conducted that can generate infectious aerosols and biohazards. These aerosols must be contained to protect laboratory personnel as well as the environment from exposure. Other procedures require a sterile environment with non-turbulent airflow so that cells and other cultures will not be contaminated while they're being handled. Both of these procedures can be performed safely in a biosafety cabinet using proper working technique. Prior to starting work, you must carefully assess the risk of the work against the laboratory's policy and plan the items and steps to be used in your procedure. List all the items required for your work, including equipment, cultures, media, and other materials. Your list will help you prepare the necessary items before starting work. Depending on the work being conducted, the risk assessment, and your laboratory standard operating procedure, you should wear appropriate personal protective equipment such as additional gloves, respirator, goggles, or even a face shield for some of the higher risk work. Before donning your protective clothing, wash your hands thoroughly with germicidal soap. When conducting low risk work, wear a long sleeve lab coat and latex gloves. Ensure the gloves cover the cuffs of the lab coat. For higher risk work, such as biosafety level 2 plus and biosafety level 3 work, a 
a solid front long sleeve gown and two pairs of gloves are more appropriate. Make sure the top gloves cover the gown's cuffs. There should be no exposed skin. Risk assessment you've made earlier may determine a respirator should be worn or eye protection should be worn, as cultures may be transferred to and from the BSC. Gloves, garments, and other protective equipment will protect you from the agents you work with and will also keep you from contaminating the cabinet work zone, your cultures, and other research materials with skin flora. If a germicidal UV lamp is being used, you must deactivate the lamp as soon as you enter the laboratory. Raise the front sliding sash to the opening height and turn on the fluorescent lights. Ensure the air intake and exhaust area of the cabinet are free of obstruction. Start the cabinet blower and allow the cabinet to purge for 3 to 5 minutes. This will remove the airborne contaminants from the work zone and stabilize the cabinet airflow. Adjust the height of your lab chair so that your shoulders are approximately level with the front sliding sash. This will give you better visibility of the work zone and ensure that your face is protected by the front sash while giving you plenty of room to work. Wipe down the interior work zone surfaces with an appropriate disinfectant including the front air grill with a suitable disinfectant such as 70% isopropyl alcohol. The most effective disinfectant will depend on the organisms manipulated and the work conducted in the biosafety cabinet. Wipe down the external surface of items with disinfectant, then load the cabinet work zone with all the items you'll need for your work. Check the list you've made earlier on. Make sure you have everything you need before you start. Nothing should be taken out of or put in the biosafety cabinet once you've begun working. Pay special attention to the front air grill which must not be covered as illustrated here. Disruption to the inflow of air into the cabinet will compromise the cabinet performance. The cabinet work zone should not be overloaded. The biosafety cabinet work zone should be divided between three areas so that you have a clean area, a working area, and a contaminated area within the work zone. These areas must be located to minimize movement of clean items over contaminated items and vice versa. Place your waste containers in the contaminated area. Place your working equipment and specimens in the working area and your supplies should be located in the clean area. Transfer materials from the clean side through the work area to the contaminated side. Limit the use of sharp instruments, particularly needles and syringes, in the biosafety cabinet. Avoid moving your hands in and out of the biosafety cabinet. When working in the biosafety cabinet, use slow and deliberate movements. Avoid side to side arm movements as much as possible. Enter and exit the cabinet from straight on. It's essential that proper aseptic techniques be followed. Keep the top over petri dishes or tissue culture plates. Transfer viable material as far back in the cabinet as possible at work zone and always recap vials. Work with one specimen at a time and recap before going on to the next. Discard empty tubes immediately. This will minimize contamination of your work. If a spill should occur while working in the cabinet, do not turn the cabinet off. Remove your outer gloves inside the BSC as they may have become contaminated. Allow the cabinet to keep running as it will contain aerosols that may have been generated and will purge aerosols through the HEPA filter. Check your gown sleeves for contamination and discard the gown if it's dirty. 
remove your inner gloves, wash your hands, and don a new gown and double gloves. Completely cover the spill with a towel and soak with a 10% bleach solution working from the perimeter to the center of the spill. After allowing 15 to 30 minutes for contact time, wipe the surrounding exposed surface and equipment with appropriate decontaminant. Contact time will depend on the microorganism and the decontaminant. Remember to clean the bleach using sterile water afterward as it might cause discoloration on the stainless steel surface. If there are any sharps, such as broken cryoampules, pick it up with a pair of forceps or another instrument and place it in the sharps container. Never pick up sharps with your hands. After cleaning up a spill, discard your outer gloves and replace them with a new pair. Allow the cabinet blower to run, purging the work zone for several minutes. And be sure to autoclave all contaminated materials. After completing your work, run the biosafety cabinet for two to three minutes without activity to purge the air. Disinfect the external surfaces of all items to be removed from the biosafety cabinet. Spray the items with 70% IPA or ethanol. Leave it in the biosafety cabinet for 10 minutes and then wipe it clean. Follow your laboratory guideline for reusable and disposable item decontamination. Place all waste in the discard container within the biosafety cabinet. Remove, discard, and then replace your gloves. Then remove all the items that have had their surfaces decontaminated. Remove any waste, disinfect, and autoclave, or place in the appropriate waste stream. With the sash window still in the safe position, disinfect all biosafety cabinet surfaces, including the work zone and front sliding sash. The work zone side and back walls, and the front grill. Do not spray inside the front grill as only safety trained operators should open and clean under the front grill periodically. Depending on the laboratory protocol, now you can shut down the cabinet, close the sash window and turn on the UV lamp. The most effective amount of time for UV light decontamination is around 60 minutes. Some facility protocols specify cabinets should be operated continuously. Degown properly by removing and disposing your gloves and removing your lab coat. Wash your hands and forearms with germicidal soap and water. If you perform higher risk activities in the cabinet in the biosafety level 2 plus or 3 laboratory, remove your outer gloves and then your gown, being careful not to contaminate your skin or street clothes. The outer gown and gloves should be disposed of as biomedical waste. Wash your hands thoroughly with germicidal soap and water. Biological safety cabinets are classified into three classes. These classes and the types of BSCs within them are distinguished in two ways. The level of personnel and environmental protection provided and the level of product protection provided. Proper working procedure while using a BSC is crucial as it will affect the outcome of the work being performed. For more information and education, please visit our website at www.escoglobal.com.